you notice uh, when he opened the, the, the thing, how it went from slower, like barely a little stream out of that thing, yeah. to the shooting that you see? The more you open it, the faster they move. You're never supposed to operate this funky pump with your engine. You always operate it with a full throttle. You don't lower your volume with the engine. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. The coolant runs off the engine speed. So if you lower the engine speed, you lower the coolant speed. Correct. Mm -hmm. A lot of years, a lot of guys thought, well, I'll run the engine half speed, but I'll run the volume all the way out. And you overheat the machine. Right. That makes sense. Well, uh, so, so you get a plug in the machine, um, the machine stops and then you look over here at the gauge and it's saying, uh, you know, 250, 300 bar. Turn the machine off. Put it one stroke in reverse, turn it on, turn it back off, and then you, you'll walk over to the hose. And the hose will be hard all the way to the plug. So you'll be able to... Hard, hard, and where it gets soft, feel it. That's your plug. That's your plug. Hit so it with you, that sledgehammer. You go back about to where it gets hard, and whack with a hammer. Shake it under, let it fall out. Okay. Put it in forward, or fuck it again. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple um, yeah. Now, if you're going to do doing P-Rock and, uh, and two-inch hose, um, the machine accepts an inch and a half rock, so it'll let anything fall into there. Um, unfortunately, when you're dealing with this kind of hopper, it's the best to get an overlay grain. You know, build okay. you something out of a little rebar. So, you know, something something that keeps the big stuff out. That is correct, for shirt. your hoses. Yeah. That big chicken wire works good. Uh, a lot of stuff works. Okay. Lay it on there, you just take it off, and then you got inch and a half. Three that makes four. a lot of sense. And it will save a lot of aggravation, mm -hmm. a lot it's of screaming. Nine times, nine times out of 10, it's always gonna get a plug in the reducer. Yeah. Because it goes from five to two real flat. Bam, and you'll right. slam right there. You generally get in the hose. Only on prime out, where the water separates in the steam. So prime out, Harold, how, how do you normally prime out? Okay, so on a, on a rock valve, I'll, I'll just fill up about level with a rock valve, get my slick pack in a five gallon bucket, let it mix for about, uh, not so much mix, but let it gel for about a half hour. Throw it in there, suck it down about three strokes, turn it off, make sure the driver's got what he's supposed to, put it on in there, and there you go. Okay. So you push in. That you, primes the hose. That is correct. Before he pumps, it'll and I usually do about a click every second and a half. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Not, not too fast, not too slow. Okay. Until you establish. You know, the, the, actually, the concrete likes to jump over the water because because it's half mooning as it's going through. I see. That makes sense. It'll actually jump over. If you're too slow, it'll half moon all the way to the bottom, and nothing will be at the top. <laughs> Plug in. So you want to be a moderate speed. And then as you see it pop out, turn it up or slow it down. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now you were talking about reverse over there. How do you reverse this thing? Okay, so you, you got the on, on off for master switch. Mm -hmm. You got your pump kill, pump on and off, and then you got pump forward, neutral, reverse. Okay. So reverse is all the way forward. So theoretically, if you lost that switch. Theoretically, that switch operates the Schrader valve with solenoids, for reverse valve, okay. and it just turns it on and off with a magnetic coil. <laughs> so theoretically, if you lost all power, your battery, your alternator, whatever, as long as you can keep the engine running, manually, you see where that button is, you press that, and you put it forward to keep up it. Mm -hmm. button up there? Yeah. Manually, you can do this. That's what makes, that's what sets apart, you know, showing from boots. Boots is more electronic. Right. Showing is more mechanical, which is, is nice when you get that up. This has an alternator, so it keeps the battery. That's right. This is in the other side. Correct. All of this stuff is right here. Here are your belts and all the good stuff. There you go. And these are just EM one wire. Hundred amp. <laughs> yeah, you don't need hundred amp. <laughs> yeah. That thing. It's not pulling. Maybe two amps. Maybe. Right. We went. Uh, had a bunch of lights and stuff, and you know, a bit of accessories I could see. Trust me, the elevator will last forever. Don't get hot. You're not the taller from it. This is starter. Mm -hmm. 
and how many hours before you service them? Okay, so on the engine, um, you're going to run. Um, you do a synthetic lead, um, that's part of the manufacturer for diesel. And then you got your fuel, you got your oil, you got your air cleaner, right? That's there. Every and then on the hydraulic side, the same thing. Hydraulic filter and clean the fluid. Now on this filter, it, this is just the, the shell. The casing. The casing. The, in, the inside is where the element is. Yeah, you stick a piece of rebar in there and bang it a few times and it'll spin off. No, you can't just an internal filter. You have to call, call us and, you know, we're usually a day out. You know, so you just kind of schedule ahead of time, you know. Uh, Thursday, don't have a job, I'll do a service on it. They don't, they don't do these filters at Napa, I guess. No. <laughs> no, no. Definitely yeah, definitely. No, but he lives, where, where is it, you guys? Where, where are you guys located? Southern Utah. Utah. They're not going to bring the machine for a, for a service. No, I don't you, think so. You have to call them a day in advance and we can get to you today. Right. Overnight. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you can plan it a week in advance, then it'll cost you even less. Three days, you know, shipping. Mm -hmm. Probably 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. filter, you know, doesn't weigh much. Um, now there's a low part on the drain um, because the, the tank gets hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold as you're pumping. You get condensation. Those water drops are warm and they run out of the bottom. There's a low part of the tank. You can see, you take it apart right now. You know, it's got a V on it. And the low part is here. You see where the drain is. And then once a week, just a little, little bit out. Just a little bit. Not much. Just keep the water out of your tank. Yeah. That's right. Uh, um, these are turning 36 liters a minute. They don't take only the water, especially the rectal. The German style. Yeah. Always, uh, you take the cap, boom, that's it. And, uh, I've seen a piece of hair, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, especially out of the rags, you, know, like you wipe down, a little piece of hair that you leave behind, boom, 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 Just like your blood, you get a piece of hair and you're going to stop your heart, you know what I mean? So, uh, fluid to your life, but, um, We use AW46, so that's 4,600 hours, theoretically, you should get, if you clean it once a year, mm -hmm. filter it. Um, take it all out, we filter it in a 55 gallon drum and then filter it right back in. So it's filter um, a, a moderate scrub, usually what I do is I take a brake clean and then vacuum it. You shouldn't get much. Um, the only time you get contamination because it's a closed system is other than you, when you add it. So as long as you pre filter it, excuse me? If you filter your oil before you put it in, perfect. perfect. You have a filter out. card? What's that? You got a filter card? No, but I can get one. <laughs> Yeah, because remember, bulk of like oil is dirty by nature. You know, the guy gets on the tank, kicks the, sees how much he's got, and slams the lid down. That's right. getting dirt all, all day long. He's getting dirt. So uh, bulk oil is always dirty. Yep. Then we got greasing point, the most important yeah. part of the machine. I, I get you a tube, tube of grease here. Um, high density, high density. Yeah, make sure you don't buy that cheap stuff. Okay. Buy the best you can get, the red kind, high temperature. It's a little bit more expensive, but the long-term investment is phenomenal. Yes, sir. Okay. If you use that grease, you'll get your max life out of it. If you use that old graphite black grease, it, just doesn't, it doesn't do well with water. Right. Um, you know, you, I don't know if you've seen those test things where they pull a the hammer back and they bam, they slam it. They put a little water in the grease and slam it. The black stuff don't last at all. And this stuff is actually, it'll actually stick to the board and pull it up. So, um, grease is your lifeblood on, on these rear ends. If you have me go back in it, it's five grand all day. Even though it's one bearing, I'll find something else here. It you know, you know, always, always happens. I mean, people always go, oh, you know, I, I'll pick that one bearing now. That's why it's always great. <laughs> so, so, um, so, you're going to do this um, every 50 yards. So, when 50 leaves and 60 backing up, you grease. It takes about two, two pops per unit. You got uh, one, two, three on the other side, and you got two here. That's, that does it back in. It does it back in. Mm -hmm. The shift fork, and then the other there. Okay. And then you're going to do this, um, if you can think about it, when you get done with the job, re remember, so the, the concrete's in the hopper, and it's always trying to come out. So as that bearing turns, it's sliding into the bearing. So at the end of the job, you grease and you force that, that meshes material you force it back into the hopper okay and that's pure grease if you wait till you come home to the shop it's too late that grease or that 
route has now dried to the degree. So every day now it's moving, moving, moving. Pretty soon it'll lock the bearing. Yeah, the bearing costs you money. You know, there's a brass bush in there, costs you $200. You know, I mean, everything, every time. Like that. Nowadays, if you lose your shovel on the job, you're in the red. You, you know that. I mean, you, you're going to bid these jobs to compete with everybody else. You've got to be on the money every day. You can't lose a point. You can't lose a hose. I mean, if you see a hose running through a piece of rebar, man, no, oh, i got to get that rebar out of there. You know, it'll, it'll probably cut it. You know. mm -hmm. You've got to be efficient. You can make great money, but you've got to be efficient. That's right. So what? this is at the end of the job. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do this on all the bearings. Yeah. You're just, just like I said, two pumps. You don't over grease it. You know, it's just wasting it. You yeah. want to get that grout pushing out. You know, yeah. And then on the axle, of course, you're gonna do them once a month. Or what? you know, if you do every thousand miles. One last thing will be the clean out. Um, when you're cleaning up the uh, rock valve, a lot of people don't know that they're supposed to throw it on reverse in order to clean it up real well. Yeah, yeah. So you, you got the bottom. Have you, have you been around pump guys and watched them kind of clean up a little bit? It's been a while. It's been a while, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what I do is um, the, the hopper will hold about a good wheelbarrow full of concrete, full wheelbarrow, 11 wheelbarrows of the yard. So when he, when you get down to the corner of the slab and you, you have 125 foot, you know you have a wheelbarrow in the hopper and you got a wheelbarrow in the hose. So about when he needs about two wheelbarrows, I stop him. I pump the hopper down, boom, 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 boom. You see if he needs a wheelbarrow left. Okay. If you don't, then I add a little bit, pump that, and then stop. And then what I do is um, either put a board or tell the driver to get out of the way. Because it might, it might splash, not a lot, but it might splash a little bit. And some of them drivers get freaked out. Um, once I pump it all the way down, I see a little bit of air come out of the hose, I stop. Fill the hopper up with water. <coughs> and when with one motion, you don't stop. Once you start putting water through the hose, you don't stop. It will separate. You stop. Okay. So you fill it all the way up. So you want a solid mass of water. Right. So, now. so when, That's right. when he's at the edge of the form and he sees water, boom, I throw it to the side. Now the water's just on the side and it runs down. Yeah. It's just going to be gray water. Okay. Um, some states require you to put it in a sock or something. Or a, um, What works is a good trash bag, tie the end of the hose, and all the water in the rock will go in the trash bag. And the water will go out. Like leak heel. Right. You can do that. Um, you what, how much water? I fill, I fill the hopper all the way up and I pump it all the way down. Okay. I stop. I take the trap door open, I take my reducer off, and then you're just going to have about a five gallon bucket at the bottom where, where the rock valve couldn't pick it up. Right. Either you could slide a, a masonry bucket under there or a five gallon bucket. It in half. If, you know, if you're on the residential, most of the time you're on a job site, you right. you're not going to get much. Like I said, a five gallon bucket at the bottom. And it's going to be sand and rock. Don't get your wash out. Yeah. <laughs> well, here in Florida, they, they're getting a little tougher because, right, because I know water cable. Our water cable is real high. I mean, you can dig down three foot and hit water here. Yeah. We, we live in ocean. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, in reverse, I'll put the water hose in there, and, it, and it, why it's in reverse, it's it's pulling the water in, and then when it switches, it pushes the water out inside the hopper. Okay. I just keep going, keep going, keep going, and if you look in there while it's switching over, you can see the whole S tube. I mean, from the rock valve. You can see the whole rock valve shift, and you can see the light go through it. You know there's any concrete in there. Okay. You just keep washing, keep washing, keep washing, keep washing. Take you about maybe five minutes. I stop, put the water in there, close the hopper, put a sponge in the reducer, hook it back up, fill it one more time up, and now that sponge will push all the sand and rock out of your hose. Put all the clamps off. I leave. Um, I, I pull the reducer up and I fill the hopper up one more time. As that way, you can wash your arms off. As you're feeding the hose, you can wash the hose off and all that. You know, you, know, you don't have to stop and unhook the hose the last part. Right. I've already unhooked everything. So it's already coming on the drop. So the sponge. I guess that you just fill in the size of your hose, or do you yeah, full size sponge, or um, now there's a couple of here, they cost you about a dollar twenty-five. Okay. You buy a whole bag of them. You buy a whole crate of them. And they're they're real efficient. And as they get wet, they expand just a wee bit. So if you stick them through a hose, they won't actually go through a hose. You got to put them in a reducer. But as it reduces down, it takes it takes the form of the hose. Okay. And it makes like a like a plug. I've seen guys use shirts and fold and kind of shit. I guess you know as long as I mean I've had to use my shirt before in a boom truck. Yeah. You lose your bunch of boom truck. You're walking home with no pants. <laughs> That's yep. right. Expensive. Um, so there's many alternatives.
<laughs> That's about it then, right? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. You have any any more questions? Anything you can think of? Where's the fuel tank? Fuel tank, sure. Um, right now we got um, we can run red deep salt on the stays here, but naturally of course you when you go down the road you're gonna have to run um, low sulfur. So tanks here, um, it's fifteen gallons. And you know usually it lasts you about about a hundred yards. Now, there's some variants if it's real low slump, like a three inch slump, you're doing house headers or something like that. Diesel? Diesel. Right. Yes. Oh, that's diesel. Um, you're not going to get 100 yards if it's, if it's really low and hard. So what's Ooh. the purpose of this? Okay, so that that's um, every time it's stroke, it's going to splash on you. And, and then as the piston cups get worn, there's going to be a little bit of grout in there. And it's going to get more and more and more. And when you start seeing them sand at the bottom, of course, you have to replace the piston cups. They're just a rubber boot inside of a steel cup. Um, that shield was to keep actually your hands out of the damn thing while it's pumping. You know, you don't want to get your hands in there. It'll, it, it'll cut a four by four right in half. Yeah. I mean, at 200 bar, that's 5,500 uh, psi. PSI. So you know, it ain't gonna lug nothing. The agitator pull you in. You'll be lucky if it pulls you. So this just makes it so you can access that boot to replace it when you need to. C correct. And then at the end of the day, um, because what happens now is um, as this rod gets hot, there's actually Teflon seals in here. It's a scraper as the rod goes in and out. These Teflon rings will get hot and when they cool, it's like a straw. They'll suck in water. So you're gonna drain this every day. Okay. So you fill it up and this has got a, a simple drain in it. Every day you get to the job, you fill it up and every time you leave, you fill it up. Okay. And then as the piston comes back, you're gonna see four bolts here. And that's what holds that dog bone on. You take them four bolts off and take that middle part out and bring it up and put a wrench over to you and then you'll pull it back and then they'll take this stuff out. Okay. It's real easy. Yeah. So as you're draining the box, you're going to check, you know, you're going to stroke it once, bring that other side back, wash it out, and you just check those four bolts. Okay. Make sure they're tight. They shouldn't get loose on you, but they will. Um, that? That, that's for a mechanic standpoint. What that does is it loses the signal for the NG6 valve. And it, the machine doesn't know what else to do. Okay. So it sits there and holds pressure ee, on one side. So if you call me and say, Harold, it goes one stroke and it stops. I put it in reverse, it goes one stroke and it stops. I know the sword turns off. Turn. Okay. Let me turn it up on you. But it's supposed to always be in line. And that loses the signal for the switch over. Okay. The machine doesn't know what to do. So it'll hit max pressure. So then I can set pressure that way. So that's all that's for. Okay. Um, they leave them in there because, you know, it takes me you now, you know, 30 minutes to put one off. You know what I mean? So it, it, they just leave them in there. Um, the new ones actually have a, a, a tag around them, and it's zip tied, and it tells you what it is. But the older style, just, it, you know, everybody kind of, <clears throat> and that, that what you see that spool is, it goes all the way through for. That's your gear. Right, right. For S2, right. There's S1, two, and three, and three handles switch over. Okay. So what? Um, just like in a, a car, um, you have a in a transmission, you got a slave and you got a master. And you got you know four slaves and one master, so the slaves are telling what the master what to do. Okay. Without them, um, they don't know what else to do because this pallet pressure, as you can see, as that piston comes back, it shoots a little, you know, not much, ten bar pallet pressure, and that return tells the brain what is next in relation. It knows where these pistons are in relation to the rockets. In reverse, it just reverses the sequence. Okay. So if it loses a signal, which that quarter turn valve does, it cuts one of these off. It doesn't know what else to do. Right. So it's, you know, it goes through eight checks. Boom, 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 boom. The sequence. So the, Correct. The, if you lose one of the sequence, it doesn't jump to the next one. It just holds there until so it finds it hmm. mechanically mm -hmm. with pallet pressure. And it's using this pallet pressure from the main pump. That's where you're getting it from. On the newer styles, you're using it from a from a different pump. But All right. Older models they use it from the same. Um, this is considered a single circuit, and they make a dual circuit with accumulator. A little different. Um, these put, uh, I still got, I still know guys that buy boom pumps with single circuit. They swear by them. They shift a little harder, 
a little bit rougher to operate with the boom because you know you don't you don't you, that uh, compensating valve takes the shock out of it. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, they're a little bit rougher, but they run all day, all night. And I mean, like I said, these put swing on the map for sure. They made up out of gazillion these things. They still run it today. I mean, shit. In the Bahamas, they're stocked full of these things all over the place, man. They, hell, they built the Bahamas. <laughs> And you want something down there, you know, because you're the parts, you know, I mean, you can't get a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? So you got to have something that runs every day, every day, every day. And this yeah, I need the in. consistency, not the latest, greatest Mercedes bands. Right, right. And when you're starting a business off, that's what you need, right. And then when this thing builds you up enough money, you know, you start buying a few more, and then you can either rest this thing and put it in the backfield or sell it off or let mm. somebody else have some money with it, you know? That's what they were designed for. A lot of them came from Germany. All righty. So um, you got your your main pressure gauge here, and then your hour meter, and then you just got a simple old gauge. Let you know when your old pressure is getting low. The only time you'll see that light is when you know when you either start it or you stop it. Okay. If you see it while you're running, <laughs> you better yeah turn it off and figure out what's going on. Either you lost oil pressure, <coughs> or you'll, you don't have any oil, or the, the pump is going bad. Okay. The lift, the lift pump is not the uh, tail lights are LED. Uh, they're summer full. They don't, they're not too bad on getting wet. Um, however, you can step on the brake. I mean, they're, they're kind oh. of a choice stop. You know, where you, you got to kind of watch laborers get up there. And you do have uh, steps. Um, forward reverse on your agitator inside the hopper. Forward, neutral, reverse. Okay. You put left the grade up, put it neutral. Um, there's no safety on them. Uh, it's a little bit older. And like I said, it, at 200 bar, it will pull you in before you can stop it. It will. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it seems like they're slow enough when you're looking in there, but <laughs> well, it's just really it, low gear. You snag a shirt, and the way you go, it'll pull you in. I see some guy screaming, snagged his watch. He had one of them Timex with the wristband watches. That thing shot 300 feet in the air, but I finally let it go. It's scary. If I, if I had him in, it had his face next to the agitator. Oh, man. It's scary. <laughs> When I started with them, we had five stickers. They up to 78 stickers. Safety stickers. So every time somebody, you know, for the lawsuit, they got to add a sticker. So every sticker that you see, somebody's done. <laughs> so, I like the, the, the one with the pump dropping on the guy's head. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> apparently at some point it did. But. <coughs> but just, you know, verify that the gauge is at zero and, and when you're sticking your hand in. Now you can stick your hand up to about in here, but I wouldn't go any farther. You're going to see where it, where it, there's a kidney seal in there, and you're going to see it. It looks like a kidney bean, where it switches over, and it looks like there's enough room, but don't walk in front. If you if you need to, stop and get a piece of rebar. Tap it a few times, boom, she'll pop right out. They're gone. Use your prosthetic limb. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen hoses cut off. A thousand, a million hoses. Like, hey man, what's on my hose? He's stuck in there. You walk, walk, cut that thing right off. So, always, always stop the agitator. Um, Stop the machine. You know, if you're sticking your hand there, you find something. Make sure the machine's off. Okay. All right. Other than that, you, you got where you fill the hydraulic fluid up on top. So And for the service, how many hours is that? 250. Ah, 250. Right. You got it. Perfect. Flip that over, and start it. Turn it off, and you'll kill. Okay. And you turn the battery back off. That way, you know, keep from, because uh, some of the coils on the door just energized. That's the reason why they got around it. Just kill switch.
forget to subscribe. Also, you can go to our website, liveequipment.com, and you can see a complete list of equipment we have available for sale. Or just keep navigating through this channel. Have a great day.